Thank you for tuning in. We are so excited to be bringing you season five of Scrap It TV with some fresh new ideas. Today I'm showing you some techniques where you can use your Copic markers to bring extra depth and shadow to your paper piecing projects. With paper piecing, it means that you can take an image and add extra color to it without actually coloring in. In this case, we've made this card here where I have used the same paper in the background on top of the stamp, which means we are taking this to this and I'm gonna show you how. The first step is to choose some papers. Now, if you're anything like me, you've got a lot in your stash and probably lots of leftovers as well. So I dig into that and use it to make a card and work with your stamps. Today, I'm using this little vampire girl. She's a brand new stamp from Etc. Anime. Uh, you can find a link to that on my website as well, uh, which you print on the computer, which means you can pretty much print her any size that you like. What I did first was to print her on Express It cardstock because I like to use that with my Copic markers. The next thing I did was to run just a piece of printer paper through, but I've used a little bit of double-sided tape to put this pattern paper on. And as you can see, when I ran that through the printer, it has printed the design onto the pattern paper. The next thing we're going to do is cut it out. For cutting out, you'll want to use some very fine little scissors. It depends on the design that you're using, but you want to cut outside the black line. So I'm gonna make a start on her dress and I'm just cutting outside these printed black lines and I'm going to cut out the pieces that I want to have in the pattern paper. So in this case, the dress, the gloves and the shoes. You can put your double-sided tape on the back of this before you even start to cut it out. So if you do have fine fiddly pieces and you don't want to be adding adhesive to them later, put the adhesive on now. So now all my pieces are cut out, you can start to make sure that you've really got everything you want and when you place it on top of your stamped image, you'll find that everything fits absolutely perfectly. Now, you probably your next thought will be, great, I can stick all of this down. Not quite yet. Uh, we're going to colour over the top of our image first, just because if your colouring goes outside the lines, we can hide it underneath our paper piecing, okay? So I'm gonna just pop all my little pieces to the side. I'm sure I've got them all and they all fit really nicely. And I'm using my Copic markers today to color this image. So I'll color everything except the dress. If you do make a mistake and color part of the paper piecing because you're on a roll and you carry it away, it doesn't matter because it's gonna get covered over anyway. So I'm starting on the skin. I'm using E double triple zero double zero E01 and I'll use a little YR00 for her cheeks. And I'll start coloring and we'll get all of her colored in and then we can start our sticking down our pieces when she's done. It's time to start building up some shadow and I'll show you on the chest how I'm building up shadow on our little vampire girl. Obviously, vampires don't cast shadows, but let's face it, they're not one dimensional either. So we're gonna add some shading on her, under her neck, on the outsides of her arms, get a bit of cleavage going in there, show off her shoulder. We go up to the E00, now E01. We're gonna shade it exactly the same place I shaded before, but just not quite as much as I did before. So smaller um, amounts of shading and then work back down to blend that evenly. It's like playing piano scales. You work your way up and then you work your way down. And now it's just time to start peeling off the backing of my tape and sticking the uh, paper piecing that I've cut out down onto the image. It's just very tricky because people think you've coloured fantastic uh, patterns and got all these great texture finishes when in fact it's a little bit of a cheat because what we've done is just utilise the pattern paper. So it will fit absolutely perfectly over the top. And you won't see any of the white underneath it and by cutting outside those black lines your stamped lines are also included in the piece. So I'm just going to go and keep sticking these pieces down and then we're going to start adding some shadow to our, uh, to our pieces. Oops, upside down. And there's only one way to make these fit 
And the more accurate you are with your cutting, the more tightly they'll fit and make a seamless finished picture. Now it's time for us, we have our paper on top of our stamp to add some shading because it gives it a little bit more oomph and dimension. The first thing I'm going to use is a Copic Zero colourless blender. It's going to prime the paper so that when we put our colours on, it's not going to grab and leave a hard finish. It's one of the little secrets that we're going to use. I'm going to start on her sleeve here and just add a little bit of colourless blender, which of course you can't see because it's got no colour in it. I'm going to also add some C1, that's a lovely, very pale, cool grey. Go over that a few times, just flicking up into the sleeve, it leaves a little fingery edge so you don't have a hard line. It's a lot harder to blend. I'm also using my BV00, it's a fantastic colour, you can pretty much shade everything with this. And because I've used the Zero Colourless Blender first, it's all just kind of blended itself, so I don't have to constantly keep going back over it. Now that most of the shading's done, we're going to add a little bit of glitter because we all know vampires sparkle these days. I'm using an Actu Spicker Pen. The colour I'm using is Garnet. It goes beautifully with this. And I'm just picking up a little bit of sparkle on the waistband and these little fine details around her skirt. These are fantastic little markers. They have the teeniest of tiny glass flakes inside. You do need to store them lying down and they provide instant sparkle with instant drying time and that we really, really like. This also has a coloured ink inside it so it tints and sparkles at the same time but it does come in a clear so you can pretty much put that over the top of anything you like. There we go. We have one sparkling vampire. And you can, looking at it, not tell that that's paper, but once you run your hand over it, you can feel the ridges and it's going to match in with the paper we've used on the card. So it's like the ultimate in coordination. I hope you've enjoyed this project. Thanks for tuning in. Keep watching each week as we bring you new and interesting projects. Bye for now.